Alright, what's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Uh, today we're doing a versus. Hard shell versus soft shell. We bought both of these from the same place, Artemis Overland Hardware down in Springfield, Missouri. Uh, we are not sponsored by them. We are just paying customers who came in and bought these things. We decided since we bought them both from the same place, we bought both the same uh, company, which is Howling Moon. We figured we'd do a side-by-side -side review of these things. So, you all know Patrick. He's been in some of the videos. Hey. And uh, let's get started. So, my tent <clears throat> is the Stargazer. It's the full-size bed. Mine does come in a queen size, a king size, all the way up to a super king size. Price on mine retail was $2,200. Uh, mine weighs in at 121 pounds. Mine also comes with the Annex, which goes down here along the bottom. Uh, they have different models of those. The ones I got was in the Ripstop, which is the cheaper. And it actually comes in a smaller duffel bag size. Price on that was $482. Grand total on all mine was about $2,700 retail. You can get the lower annex in a canvas style, which is a lot bigger because it's made out of the same material as the tent itself, whereas the ripstop, it's a little thinner. I prefer it because it's a lot smaller to pack away, put inside this thing. On yours, you bought the Lunar. The Lunar, yeah. The Lunar. Retail on that was $3,700. Uh, it weighs in at 165 pounds and yours is roughly 54 by 84 inches long. So it only comes in one size, correct? Yeah, yeah, just the one size. Okay. So, I've had mine going on maybe a year now, almost a year. You've had yours for what, about a week? Uh, yeah, about yeah, a week, couple a weeks. Days. No, yeah. no, 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 I'm not at the first of the month. So it's yeah. been about three and a half weeks now. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, we did go down, we bought his at the, uh, the rigs and coffee event put it on while we were down there so what we're going to do is compare the two talk about what we like what we maybe change things didn't come up so great so i guess right out of the gate would be how easy is it to set up um, i would say yours wins by far yeah it's it's pretty simple to set up it's unlatching yeah you know four four hooks whatever and uh just a little push and it goes up and you know 30 seconds it's, it's a very easy setup yeah now mine 30 seconds in I might have mine unfolded and that's about it um, I've noticed over time it does get easier to put them up and put them down but definitely side by side yours wins by far just on ease of ease of setup really yeah um, and, but that's not including you know putting in in your pull pieces and everything else yeah. but yeah no it definitely goes the hard shell for sure goes quicker yeah um, good thing about mine that I really like is it does come in different sizes so if you have different size vehicles or if you're trying to put more than one person up there I mean you can put a king size bed on the top of your vehicle and that to me is insane yeah that's you know that's gonna just kill it forever if you got a whole family of four or something you got to put people up there I mean I would say this one's gonna take the cake on yeah that, that's definitely gonna be your winner I, I wouldn't I would not put three people in that I don't care what it says yeah. two how people. many comfortably would you be two people comfortably two people comfortably okay is in there about the same with mine now our tents they are about the same size um, full-size mattress size so if you're putting a sheet on it what is it like a full size or a, a full-size extra long okay is is exactly what I bought and it fit the mattress great uh, no complaints yeah. but, uh, full XL okay now there is a difference in ours the mattress itself mine is like a three inch uh, memory foam and yours is actually like a f actual mattress yeah it's it's almost three inches but yeah it's a it's a mattress it, it's a great okay. it's a great sleep it sleeps good it sleeps wonderful there you go there you go uh, as far as ventilation goes this is the stargazer so this thing's got flaps and folds everywhere which open up day like today when it's warm outside if you had everything closed up it's going to get a little warm but with everything open i get a really good breeze through there and i mean i can't complain i mean yours every side opens up on it yeah you know you get four sides with ventilation so whichever way the wind's blowing you're getting a yeah. good breeze yeah uh, another perk about mine that i do enjoy is having the covered portion over the steps now i know yours has a smaller portion do you find it you know difficult to 
if it's raining out, are you getting just soaked sitting there, or are you pretty yeah, covered? No, I'm, I'm pretty covered, but you're right. The, the overhang is a definite plus. Yeah. Um, the thing I don't like about it is where you place your ladder, whatever side, it really blocks you getting into your vehicle on that door. Very true. And so, you know, it's a small complaint, but if you've got your cooler on that side, it's something where you're going to be getting in and out of, it's kind of a pain. Yeah. So you got to kind of be mindful of how your setup is on the inside of your vehicle and where you're going to tent with your buddies if you're facing the wrong way or something. Yeah. You're not going to be able to get to your stuff, so you got to be leery about what's going on there. And then the, the ladder at first was kind of a pain um, just to get on the loops. Um, but doing it now multiple times, it's not nearly. I was going to be like, oh, I'm going to complain about that in the video. But now it's, you know, I guess I just didn't have it correct on how I was putting it in. And now it's it's fine. Yeah. Uh, can you store your ladder up inside there with it closed? Yes. You can? Yeah. Okay. That's cool. See, like on mine, when it folds up, the ladder goes on top. So with yours, being able to keep it up in there, it's not another thing you're going to have to pack inside your vehicle. Um, yours also, with it having the hard shell, it's got a little more clearance in it, so you can probably keep more bedding and stuff. In I there. keep all my bedding in there. I, awesome. I just kind of move the pillows right to the center instead of keeping them on the ends. But no, I keep I keep my, uh, my sheets, my blanket, my pillows. Um, there's a lantern in there that I keep, earplugs, I mean there's there's lots of little storage cubbies in there too. That's another thing I was going to ask you, the storage on that. I noticed like on mine I've got your small ones, about that big, but there's two on each side. Uh, keep your phone, whatever. I also came with a, uh, a hanging bag to put like your boots in when you're climbing up. That way you can kind of clip them onto the end, keep them out of the way. But how's yours for, for storage set up? So, so how you said you've got on each side, I don't have that. I've got two um on each side to, you know where your head is facing or and your feet um and there's four little pockets you know to store your phone yeah. you know earplugs nice. you know whatever you want small things yeah they're yeah. they're available cool um another thing the difference between the two hard shell soft shell um mine's shaped like a brick so going down the highway, you get the wind, you do feel it, but the Jeep also is shaped like a brick. Um, Yours is almost like a Tetris piece. It like, yeah. you know, yeah. it goes, it's, so. It's very odd shaped, but yeah, if on a windy day, you do feel it up there when the wind hits it just right. How was yours on the highway for, with it being more of a compact? You know, I really don't feel it. I notice very little noise from it. It's been a, and don't get me wrong, it, it's definitely hurt my miles per gallon. Yeah, yeah, but we don't build them for that. No, <laughs> no, but you know, it is something you notice. Yeah. Um, but I don't notice the wind noise. Um, it, it's not been too terrible on the highway. Um, nice. So I do, it's, it's been a good buy yeah. so far. Perfect, perfect. I can tell you that the downside to rooftop tents, um, installation. So mine was, difficult but not terrible um, I have decent access to my roof rack mounts that I made so getting your hand under there I'd, I'd say that's probably one of the downers to rooftop tennis putting it on especially if you're gonna put it on and take it off yeah I take mine off during the winter because usually I'm doing some kind of a project on the Jeep and I'm not doing it outside um, I don't do a whole lot of winter camping I do go deer hunting so I have it on for that but once I'm done I like to get it off there and put it in the garage and work on do regular maintenance stuff over the winter um, I know when we put yours on the great thing about yours was the sunroof we could just open the sunroof and you had both access to the, both those front mounts yeah the front mounts went on much easier than the, very the rear. Easy, yeah and, and the problem too is is you're putting it on a low profile roof rack that I have you know it's a Sherpa um, roof rack and, and it is a great part about a low profile roof rack yes. is it's low profile yeah the worst part about a low profile roof rack is it's a low profile so you don't get yeah getting your arm under there oh, to the rears major pain in the ass that took forever to get them on because you got the way these go on they've got rail tracks underneath you got like a keeper and then the bolt and you got to slide that in get it over the mount slide the other one in and there's a plate and you got a washer and a lock nut that go on underneath so 
what we found was taking a ratchet wrench, putting electrical tape on it, and then sliding in there and just working it on. But I mean, that did take, so if you're looking at, oh, I'm gonna put this on for, you know, a trip and then take it off and then maybe put it on when I go on. Good I don't luck. Know. Yeah, good, good luck. luck. I mean, you can do it. Don't yeah. get me wrong, you can do it, but. It, it, it took all of my fears too of somebody stealing it. Yeah. I was like, well, yeah. good luck. I if mean. If you come out and it's gone, then you know they've worked for <laughs> yeah. it. So you probably just let them have it. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it really didn't, you know, I was like, do I need to get locks for this? And yeah. it's, no. Yeah. So that's something like on mine, mine sits a little higher. So if somebody was gonna steal it, it's it's probably gonna be a little easier. But because I've got my solar panel up there, they're gonna have to slide that out. By the time I think you'd hear somebody out there taking it off, you could probably come out and just beat the hell out of them. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, yours was a little more difficult. Now I know on yours, with your side awning, uh, the mounts on it kind of elevated it on one side. So that is something yeah, we're gonna have to do something with those we will mounts have to at some point. Remake mounts. It does make it a little yeah. uneven. If... I've seen people where they'll offset their tent to one side um, for an issue like that, but I, I think I like them just straight down the center balance. Yeah. So that's something if you're if you're looking at doing it, just you're probably gonna have to look at your roof rack and then decide is my awning. Or yeah. the brackets in the way and that's that's an issue too i mean because i bought the brackets from sherpa to go directly with this and, and yeah i mean who would have any idea that that would be sticking up and or yeah. when it did that it was gonna, it's not terrible it's not but, but it's, it, it does kind of elevate it on one side maybe like half inch to an i don't know maybe, yeah yeah maybe, maybe a half inch, inch you yeah. know yeah so yeah. but it's definitely noticeable so yeah. it, it's noticeable in the rig when you're sleeping in it kinda so you a little yeah bit. Um, the cool thing with his, I noticed on top, if you're running a solar setup, it's got the U channels up on top too, and that's you can mount a solar panel right up on top. Yeah, it's got U or it's got the tracks up yeah. there, you know, whatever you really. Now, can you mount uh, uh, your tracking boards up there? If you, want to you know, I think I probably could. See, there you go. Um, Universal. Yeah, you know, and the, the lifts in there, I would imagine you put stuff up there that's lightweight. Yeah. yeah. You know, the, the, the struts in there seem pretty tough. Nice. Um, so you probably get away with doing more than what you think. I, I bet you this goes up, you know, if there was snow on top of it without any issues. Yeah. yeah. Um, now, another good thing that I like about mine, and, and yours is made out of the same, the material, the canvas material that they use is actually thicker than a 23-0. Um, and what I like is, if I'm in there sleeping and it's windy like this, let's say it's a cool night and that wind's got a little chill to it, I don't feel it. Mine's pretty solid when it comes to wind, so you're not laying in there feeling a draft flow through. And yeah, that's the same. same thing. And yeah, yeah it's uh, the other nice thing I like is how dark my, yeah. my tent stays. Because yep. um, I've seen reviews and people complain, you know, and you know, I'm up pretty early when I camp, so it's not a big deal, but. Yeah. It's also nice to be able to sleep in when you close it all up and exactly. still have the darkness. Exactly. Now, like the 23-0 actually comes with the light blocking. What I have found that comparing the two side by side, this is pretty good. Yeah. Like I said, it's not pitch black, but it gets the job done. It's pretty dark up there in yeah. that. And I, you know, I, I assume part of it's the hard shell yeah. keeping everything nice and dark. But yeah, that fabric just keeps everything. Yeah. I mean, for me, I feel like I can easily sleep its own. You know, nine, ten o'clock in the morning. Easily, yeah, definitely. All right, so now let's get to the stuff that everybody wants to hear. Things that I wouldn't say bad things. I would just say things that came up as issues that are going to be addressed. Um, so mine, I noticed on the main cover, um, when you zip it up and around, it, it it comes pretty tight in some spots. I noticed over time it kind of loosens up, which is also nice. The zipper on mine, I've had no trouble with. It's a heavy duty zipper. I know you've had troubles with zippers. Yeah. Um, go ahead and tell us about your zipper issues. And so just setting up, you know, it's, and they do use a good heavy duty zipper. Yeah. Um, but just setting up, I lost a complete zipper and the whole uh, piece like that allows it, part, yeah, yeah. The, to slide in and out. So. You know, we're gonna get in touch with Howling Moon and Artemis and see what the solution is. Yeah. Um, everything on the tent seems 
very taut and tight on mine. Yeah, because yours is, it's got shocks that kind of push everything up and set up. And yeah. Back in. So it's almost maybe too tight. Uh, yeah. We'll see if it loosens up. Um, you know, I, I've been able to run this for a week long trip. Yeah. Um, and then the other things um, is we had a handle. Um, the stitching came off yeah. on one side of it. Yeah. Um, and these are definitely kind of a pain. Mine's a pain yeah. to put, to take down. I noticed helping you out there. With they, one person. Really, yeah, one person, definitely. I noticed when we did yours, uh, we went on a camp trip. Um, the two of us, it, it seems like it, it is, you pull the front down first. Yeah. And then you pull the rear. And it seems like the rear, I was helping you on the rear side of it, pulling it down. And it, it's really not a it's not a struggle but it seems like it's a little more difficult than it should be to pull that thing down maybe it is because it's new maybe it's because the i don't maybe the springs in there yeah I, you know it, it it's obviously used a heavy duty strut yeah, for that look for that um you know it almost i'd almost prefer the magellan style where it's got a little crank handle in there mm -hmm. and, and you manually do it um because to me i mean it's great that it goes up in 30 seconds yeah um, but i i dealing with this and the crank handle with the Magellan it it lowers it yeah. too so you know it'd be so much easier yeah. with one person for that to go straight up and for it to come right back right down, down yeah. the ladder um, just that I don't know I'm not 100% it's kind of loud and creaky And my buddy said something when I got up in the middle of the night. You can hear it. Yeah, you they're like, man, we hear that. Yeah. Like, flip side to it. So I was informed the the telescoping ladders, so you see on like a twenty three zero and all that kind of stuff. They've had issues with those, and I know that. Uh, and had told me that they've actually replaced uh, quite a few of those because like something of them wears out. Um, and these, it's just got the clips on it, so it's like a single pull down. They lock in, but yeah, they are. Creaking, they are creaking aluminum when you're yeah. on them. I've noticed that with mine also. Um, as far as yours goes, you actually have extenders on yours because yours sits higher than mine. I don't need the extenders. Um, the good thing with the aluminum ones, I guess, if it is, because they, they only lock in in one place from the factory. Yeah. But if you had to change it, you could drill out another set of holes into the ladder. Yeah, and make it wherever you want yeah, it to be. But you're not going to solve the creaking aluminum. No, so if no. you're the guy that gets up at 2 in the morning to take a whiz, uh, your buddies are probably going to hear you get up. And they definitely did. <laughs> and they will let you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah, on mine though, like I said, the one downer, um, the main canvas that covers it, I noticed on the one side I was pulling on it a little bit, and I heard also the same thing. Some of the stitching, just on one of the Velcro corners that covers the zippo, or a zipper, um, when I yanked on it, I could hear some of the stitching pop. Um, I've kind of learned from that is just kind of, you really kind of got to wrestle that top cover on. And that's the other downer from mine. And I wouldn't say it's much of a downer, is putting it away. There's so much canvas that yeah. you got to tuck away. And like yours, take your poles down, pull it in, close it up. You're on the trail. Yeah. Meanwhile, I'm over here, I'm, I'm tucking and folding. And, but it is what it is, because mine also, it, it is a bigger unit. But all in all, it's a fantastic night's sleep. The yeah. mattress, hey, it's a game changer. Yeah, definitely. I mean, going from ground camping to rooftop. Oh, yeah. I, I don't mind sleeping on the ground, but to have something with comfort, space, and be able to know that if it's pouring down rain or something like that, like, I'm going to be able to chill up there, get yeah. a good night's sleep. Like, it's perfect. Yeah, I, I, I wouldn't change it. I love it. Yeah. Was it expensive? You bet. Yes. Yeah. Was it worth it? So, and my other thing is, you know, I really tried to get something of high quality, and if it's not vehicle specific, yeah. like I can move it on to something else. Yeah. So, I thought, well, let's just spend the money and be done with it. Yeah. And I know yours with the hard stuff because you like that low profile effect. Yeah. Um. That it is. That is a very solid fiberglass case that it's in, and I think if you bump it into a tree, I wouldn't worry about it. No. I mean, mine. I hit it into a tree. That's all canvas. So there is that little inkling in your head of, oh boy. Yeah, is it, will <laughs> this rip? Yeah. Is it gonna rip? Is it gonna snag? Now mine is, it's it's pretty compact. So 
I think if, if that's going to hit something, the Jeep's going to take some damage first. Unless it's a low-hanging branch that I just didn't notice going underneath or something. But yeah, that, that's always in my head on a trail is if I smack mine into something, like what kind of damage is it going to receive? Yeah. Because yours would have been a nice hard shell case. I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't worry too much. I'm not, you know, and, and you know, yours sits really nice on your, you know, it doesn't yeah. overhang. Yeah. yeah. You know, I think, I think mine on this overhangs each side by like an inch and a half. It's okay. a very small... Yeah. Uh, what it sticks out. You just gotta keep, keep your eyes out. So yeah. If you got a spotter and you're in a tight spot, talk, you know, hey, I got a tent up here. You wanna, <laughs> wanna make sure I don't have to buy another one? <laughs> well, yeah. The thing I would change or try to reinvent, I don't know. These, these work, but they're, they're a pain. So, these little ball socket pieces that hold up the main awning part, these here are a pain in the butt. Uh, you almost feel like you're going to break them when you pop them out of there. But, I mean, they're pretty stout, but that would be something I would uh, put in the potential category of breaking over time. But, yeah, I mean, as far as pricing goes, there there is a price difference, you know. I've seen my tents for $1,500 to $3,000. And I've seen yours start at, you know, $2,500 to... 6,500, 7,000 even. Um, I can't speak on the, the the more expensive tents because, I mean, obviously this is what we're running. But, I mean, I like mine. I'm happy with it. Uh, yeah. Would I go back to ground camping? I don't know. I'm sure we will. I don't know if I'll go back fully to it, yeah. but I have no problem taking yeah. a tent and, yeah. you know, sleeping on the ground. But, yeah, it was a total game changer. Absolutely. It, it really gives you a good night's sleep out in the woods yeah yeah comfort where you need it and like i said with my project everything on my project is always kind of like budget friendly i know the rooftop tents you're gonna be like oh that's not really a, a budget friendly option but you know what if, if you're gonna do it you're gonna spend the money spend it where you need it yeah and having a good night's sleep out somewhere i definitely want that yeah howling moon has been making you know these rooftop tents i think for something like 25 years yeah Huge, huge so, over in South Africa. In Australia, Australia. Too, right? um, I believe Artemis is the only Howling Moon dealer in the United States right now. So if you're in the market for a rooftop tent, definitely check out the Howling Moon. I'm very happy with mine. Like you're loving yours. Yeah. You had some issues, but we're gonna, you know, reach out and yeah. see what we can do to make them right. And, yeah, you know, hopefully Howling Moon comes back to rectify the situation. So, you know, I haven't even given them a chance yeah. to do that. So that'll be, we'll, we'll drop an update and let you know what's going on with that. And uh, But I, I don't think there'll be any problems. I mean, these are high quality tents, great customer service. They are local to us. Yeah. It's only three hours away. So to make a trip down to, to do something or whatever, that's, that's kind of why I went with mine. Because if I had a problem with... Uh, a different brand like the closest place wasn't even anywhere near my house yeah and so, then the shipping too to not have to have yeah. something truck freighted to yep. you know yeah, it's a nice day drive down to, to check them out and uh yeah like I said, if there's a problem they are local to us so we can always make a run down make a weekend out of it have a good time and yeah uh, there's there's close there's trails close by yeah. you know and artemis just didn't have that have howling moon check uh tents for us to check out yeah you know, they had other brands yep. that they'd open up and they're there at their store level that you can really yeah. um, get into. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, don't think that you're just going there just, just for, for the Howling Moon. Yeah. We had other tents there um, and people were buying other tents when we were yeah. there. So, oh, yeah. Numerous tents were being put on that day. Yeah. So, but I'd say we'll pretty much wrap it up. Yeah. Um, Howling Moon, good job on the tent. I love it. Get a great night's sleep when I'm out, and uh, I couldn't be happier. Yeah, I love mine. So, well, that's gonna do it, you guys. As always, thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing. I'll put links down below to Artemis if you guys are interested in looking for tents. Like I said, we are not paid for, sponsored, anything like that. We just bought our tents from the same place, had a great time there, and uh, we like it. So, that's gonna do it. See you in the next video.